Hi again. Um, for those who are joining, welcome. Um, we we want to do the second presentation, uh, which is about uh, Resilience Academy as a sustainable solution for urban resilience skills development in Tanzania. Um, my name is Mr. Kale Msilanga. Uh, I work at the World Bank in Tanzania, but also now join the team uh, of University of Turku to implement this project. It's a pilot project that has been done now uh, in Tanzania, uh, but it's just a continuation of previous projects uh, that that has been um, ongoing as a way to sustain uh, to sustain the project. So, um, if I just in, in actual background um, is that Africa is really um, urbanizing very fast. Um, and uh, because of this, there's a lot of increased um, informal settlements. And study shows that um, by 2025, the, among all the population that will be living in urban, uh, urbanized cities in Africa, um, most of them are young people. They are the one who lives in this informal settlement. Therefore, they 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 are in risk um, um, from different uh, disasters. So, just take you um, to Dar es Salaam. Dar es Salaam is the city um, that I'm from. Um, it's uh, one of the case study that's been we've been working in the past uh, six years. Um, Dar es Salaam, yeah, is also one of the city that is growing very fast in Africa, and there's. Um, more than 80% unplanned settlement. Um, and because of this, um, also the infrastructure gap is really big. Uh, that is, the city is growing fast, uh, but the, the, the development of infrastructure is, is very slow. So it doesn't match with how the city grows. Uh, so there's a lot of increased um, uh, problems. Um, and one of them is, uh, is flooding. Um, then every year when it rains, uh, people get affected with floods. Um, so we've been working on this. Um, um, as the way of, of new thinking, how do we how do we use this um, situation to solve the problem? And so, what w Residence Academy project? What we are doing is um, try to rethink um, the approaches uh, that is usually being done uh, for the normal uh, university, for example, and other stakeholders um, using the, the the you know if you teach the young uh, students or young people right now, the right tools and the right knowledge, they are able to make changes when they are their they are decision maker. So Resilience Academy is trying to, to institutionalize that to the university, but also understand the, the tools and knowledge, open source tools and knowledge that are available and then being implemented. So that's the approach uh, to be used right now. Um, it's the one that needs to be evaluated and thoughtful uh, well. But also the other thing that we need to think is um, is how this, these trainings and these new approaches uh, on the way you teach open source tools um, can can go into the bringing impact to the community. Uh, so in the with this project, what we're trying to do is to to learn how how these tools can can involve students, but also involve the community, local community themselves, um, but also working on the issues available um, uh, rather than doing some imaginary issues at the universities to solve issues that are not available, but just how to, to match uh, between the issues available and the solutions from the university. Uh, but so you're, you're therefore empowering um, the university and the, and, the, and the university as an institution, but also you are able to help the, the, uh, by providing solution and bring impact on the ground. Um, so, well, also due to the increased number of um, tools available in the open source um, community, um, so through the Resilience Academy, we are learning about how these tools really um, are current and they are able to to to, to deliver. Um, the issue, one of the issues that we we figured out is that this, um, there was no data available of the city. Um, because the city is growing very fast. And because of this, um, there's no information available. So how do you use these simple tools? Very easy, very simple and open. Um, 
that to collect a lot of information. For example, yeah, everybody has the mobile phone. How do you use mobile phone as a way to sustain and, and make data collection working into this informal settlement? Therefore, to provide uh, information and as well as um, to make decisions really use the data in deciding. Um, yeah, so through this process, we have we really think on, on, on and the local community themselves because the local community have knowledge and they know what's really happening on the ground. So how do you get this knowledge from the local community themselves and uh, streamline that to the university and uh, people who are doing researches and studies and use these source tools to work together to, to make good decision making. So the involvement of the community, local community themselves is kind of a way that if we think of how to use it and involve them, um, it will be a way to get uh, better decision making. Um, the other thing that also Resilience Academy is trying to do is how do you do we how do we um, tell other community like how do we make the impact um, and tell other local communities to understand things that have been done because most of the time this kind of projects comes and then you do a project and then you leave and therefore the community they just do the project when the project is finished no one get really um, to use what has been done so how do we use um, this way to make the community really use these maps or tools that has been developed um, for decision making. Um, so Resilience Academy is right now working with four universities in Tanzania, uh, but coordinated with the University of Turku as a way to share experiences, uh, but also within the university to create a network where these tools um, can be really um, implemented from the university side and be institutionalized. Um, understanding that, for example, the university ways of teaching really it takes longer to adapt to what's coming um, on, the, on the tech side, for example. So how do you, you, you know, the university um, change their curriculum or ways they, they teach using the current tools to solve the current solutions? Uh, so we're working with these four universities um, by um, doing three things. One is to, to, to develop the training materials and we are going to be doing this online and also the university, uh, learning from these experiences that we have had uh, and the tools that have been done um, to be able to incorporate that within the university but also share with others uh, who could use the same learning material or uh, the same experiences to also learn. We are also doing um, open access to spatial data, understanding that um, a lot has been done already, uh, a lot of data have been collected, uh, but as, okay, we know that data has been collected, but really everybody's collecting data. How do we harmonize the data uh, that's been collected into one place um, so that as Resilience Academy, the university can access it, but also the decision maker can access it and sustain that through every year when, for example, a PhD student have done his master's and then share the same data somewhere in the, in the in the database and then keep that um, you know, updating and learning um, to help updating but also sustain um, uh, the way we do things. And the other thing that we are doing is we are doing the industrial training uh, program. And this is um, every year we're taking students to this four university at the moment um, and we you know, teach them, um, as I mentioned, the current tools and we do some data collection. They do practical works uh, or learning as an industrial training um, so that they are, you know, they are, they have this employability. Like they learn something that they could use in the real world after they have done their university. Um, yeah. So the, as I've mentioned, this is just to go details of what we're doing. This is the the, the developing uh, training material part, uh, where through the first four universities that we're working on. We are now partnering with other universities that are now joining. We, are, we have the University of 20 and Delft University that are also joining the team right now, just to try to, to share experiences and share tools uh, for the university to learn and also change the way they, they teach. Um, and also this is to explain more in details on the, on the climate risk database that we've done. Um, just up to now, we have already collected a lot of information in the database. Um, that you could already see what have been done, and this can create stories of different analysis, different tools, 
uh, and different, for example, issues. And, and you know, like if one comp one organization have used, I don't know, two types of data um, to do a certain analysis using a certain tools, they can learn through this, and then therefore it's just replicable, li replicable uh, process instead of everybody come to new to do uh, new things. So this is also one of the things that we are doing. Um, and the last thing that uh, what we're doing is, the, as uh, as we, we, we speak right now, we have um, um, 150 students uh, trained doing the industrial training, and we, we're training these tools, QGIS, you know, like uh, mobile phones, and other tools, open source tools that are available, and they're doing data collection um, while they're doing that as industrial training. Uh, as I mentioned, this is the pilot project, um, but We'll see how it goes, uh, but the plan is to extend into other cities uh, so that they also have the same experience or learn um, through this. Thank you so much. Any question? Um. For the future, because this is a pilot project, you say. So you are training now only uh, university students, and now I'm. I was uh, thinking about the future. Uh, how can we access lower educated people? And you say everyone has a, mo a, mo a mobile phone. Wouldn't it be very cool if everyone just uh, have a, a yeah open street map? thing on their phone that they can uh, just map and add data from their own neighborhood with an easy, low-level way? Yeah, thank you for the question. So this is, um, yeah, as I mentioned, this is the process, right? Um, so we think that when you want to educate the, 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 the community, first of all, we start with young people. And this is why we've gone for the university. And while we are doing this, we are also doing also participation, a lot of participation where the local community are also being trained how to use mobile phone. But it's it starts from the from the com from the young um, people, who then are going back to the community and explain how this has been done, and the community uh, really part get to know uh, this thing uh, as part of their initiative. Um, and um, yeah, through that way, then we, we we do a lot of participation with the community. Then we educate the whole community in general. Uh, but as of now, we are doing this through all these three components. Um, uh, when we do the industrial training, we usually go to the community and the community get to know what's been done, they participate. Um, last five years we've been doing the same and we've managed to collect a lot of information. Uh, more than 3,000 communi local community have been trained and participate into this. So it's a process and hoping that it can you know, sustain itself through you know, the university students who are doing this, uh, or when they're doing PhD or studies or researches, then it's easy for them to use the same methodology and use the community to generate this type of information. Any other question? You had a question. Oh. Just take a quick question. Uh, you said the courses are online. So is it like uh, mocks, like massive online courses? And uh, so people can uh, also uh, access these courses even by if they're not part of the university ah okay it's quite interesting yeah so in the in the course line we are still in the university um so you know this process of you know curriculum and analyzing and, and learning and develop some training material and modules um but the aim is to go to the MOOCs um, also uh, to develop some online course that everybody not only the student can access it um but also but the uh, non-student can also access it, but sure. Yeah, related to your question, the lady's question, um, what about uh, education at school level? Is that what you were implying? Um, secondary school? No. You answered about the community, but so community, yeah. Yeah. But what what about secondary school? Um like is GIS in the syllabus? Can you take GIS into the classroom at, at high school? And is it happening in Tanzania? 
Okay, so that's a good question. Um, I think I don't have a right answer for this now, but I think it's the is is very good part to start thinking about it. I know that uh, secondary school have been learning about geography, right? General geography. But um, um, so yeah, the question is how do we bring this? I know it's another really long road to go through. Um, if we want to go to that, you know, to start to talk, to have this discussion with the, you know, curriculum, etc. Um, but it's it, it's really, um, yeah. If it would have been nice to 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 have the this from to to start to, imprim, to impress them from uh, secondary school level. Therefore, when they are in secondary, they, they are the, at the university, then they are they are able to, yeah. But uh, it's a nice uh, comment and idea. Someone had a question here. Uh, more than a question is a commentary. Uh, I don't know if you ever heard about youth mappers. Uh, oh, okay, because it is nice to see that that project and with youth mappers, with that network, you can you know maybe find support for that for that project. Yeah. Yeah, uh, this project, Resilience Academy, is a continuation of many projects that have been done. Um, youth Mapper is part of the of this project. We have humanitarian and stage map that have been doing this project. Uh, the Resilience Academy is really to try to learn all that experiences that has been done by youth mappers, by Open Street Map, and other organizations. They have done a lot of data collections. Uh, yeah, so if we just live like this, then everything ends. So this is try to really to institutionalize and to learn that experience from all the initiative that has been done, but to try to you know bring back formally. Um, through the university, but also, you know, how do you use that to go to the policy, whatever. So it's kind of a way to sustain the way we do. Yeah, so Ramani Huria, yeah, did not, yeah, that's a good uh, idea. Ramani Huria is this one of the projects that, that was done. Ramani Huria means uh, local maps. Uh, so what we've, we've been doing Ramani Huria since 2015, uh, is this industrial training um, part where we uh, we we did an MOU with the university and every um, every semester no every end of the year a student is supposed to do industrial training right but previously students were just going randomly looking for industrial training to do uh, so this Ramani Huria was to take these students and then give them this knowledge different type of knowledges you know um, the data management knowledge mapping data correction open source tool etc. Um, and and through this Ramani Huria, uh, they were doing that, but also, you know, community uh, was part of it. So the 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 train the students were being trained, then go to the community. They teach the community um, how these things are done, uh, and then the community do some data collection. We have done a lot of testing and and you know doing some data collection through this project, and it was really a successful project. Um, and uh, yeah, so this is how we are trying to learn through the the Resilience Academy. How do we Proceed that uh, through the channel of the university. Any last question? Yeah, because of Ramani Huria, exactly. Yeah, we have one. I think this uh, last one. Oh. Yeah, thank you uh, very much. Uh, I know you mentioned that uh, how you try to make the communities use the maps and the data you produce. I'm just uh, wondering how best you do that because most of the times maps are produced but they are mainly used by institutions or organizations. But how do you make that local, low-level people use these maps and data? Yeah, that's a very good question. So in Tanzania, um, if, you, if a local community want to move to a new place or a new barrio or a new neighborhood, they have to report to to a ward level or a sub ward level that I'm now moving to this area. Uh, and they have to report every time. So this could be, okay, so this is a, you know, um, changing the attitude and the way people start to use. Previously, co community do not know about maps and do not de demand about map. But, you know, it's a question of how do we, through these ways, how do you use uh, um, uh, this method as the way to sustain? And we have some number of cases where when the community is moving to an area and we have big maps uh, on each subward office now, uh, then the 
leader is really looking into okay so where are you going to stay oh this area this area uh, it floods just be in mind and and try to have this conversation going from the local level um to try to change uh, uh, really the way people think and and yeah i understand that there is issues where during for example uh, summer where there is no uh, rain people move a lot to the informal setting because they don't know uh, and then during rain season, they get they get affected. But so how do you, do you have this conversation all through the year when you have the maps and knowledge is from the local level, but also some of the community who participate then keep keep saying to to other community members so they understand uh, what's going in the community. Um, yeah. Any last question? We have. Uh, good. Thank you so much.